Good morning. It's good to see you this morning. I think between allergies and colds and stomach bugs and blues, I think, like Jim said, I think everybody's been hit a little bit. But I'm uh, glad to see the ones of you that could make it out here today. I guess if there's one message, and turn me down just a little bit, Jim, if there's one message that I've preached over and over and over, it's on having a vision. 20 times probably more page in the last 14 years. Uh, a lot of times I've stood up here. And I woke up this morning, I'd been studying all week and got a few thoughts on my mind and actually a few messages. And I woke up this morning, I sat down about, about 5.30, I sat up on my bed, and Matt, I took my pen and the paper, and I began to write down my vision, what my vision was. And here in this, the next few days, it's going to be 2020, right? 2020 vision's perfect. I hope the church has a good 2020 vision. My eyes ain't quite 2020, but spiritually, I'm seeing pretty good right now. And that's what's going to matter is how you're seeing spiritually. Uh, I want to read to you a little scripture. I'm not probably not going to preach. I'll probably just talk to you this morning. I want to uh, I want to share a very simple vision that God has given me for me. I want you to think about yours, but I do want to tell you mine, and I want uh, I want to tell you what my vision for this church to finish out this year and to start the new year what the vision should be in Luke chapter number four. You can turn there. You don't have to stand up this morning. How many of you are glad to be here this morning? Amen. I'd rather be here. I used to hear my pastor say all the time he'd rather be here than the finest hospital in America. And I have to agree with it. I won't take very long. I know it's already... It's already lunchtime this morning, but I do want to share this with you. Luke chapter number 4, verse number 19 says this right here. To preach the acceptable year of the Lord. Lord, we love you. Thank you so much for your anointing, your power, and God, for your presence this morning. Lord, in our service, thank you for the singing. God, in the Sunday school lessons, Lord, I love you. God, I thank you for them. And Lord, I pray that... Uh, God, you, the ones that don't have a vision, Lord, you give them a vision for their lives. Uh, starting this morning, God, the ones that are lost, Lord, I pray you'd save them. Start them. Let them start a brand new life. Not a new year, but a new life. Lord, we need your presence, need your power so bad in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. My, my vision is to have an acceptable year. And I begin to think about last year. And one of the things that I want to do, I want to learn, Brown, from the mistakes that I've done last year and made, and I don't want to make them no more. I want to learn from those, and I want to improve on those, Alan. I don't want to make them. And the mistakes I make this year, I only want to make one time. Can you hear me this morning? It sounds a little funny up here, but listen to me. I begin to think about last year, and one thing changed my life more than anything Denise that's ever changed it in the whole ministry other than getting saved and getting called to preach. That was the prayer of Jabez. I've prayed it, and I've preached it, and I've prayed it, and I've preached it, and I've prayed it, and I've preached it, and I want to end the year. I want New Year's night, Brian, at 1159, before we turn the calendar over to a new year. I want to close my year praying that prayer. And whenever I turn the calendar over to January 1, Doug, I want to open the year praying that prayer. And if I do that and I'm consistent with that and I stay with it all the time, Brown, next year when we roll the calendar to 2021, and you know what? Believe it or not, you're going to blink and somebody's going to be standing in this pulpit next year at this time saying it's glad we got a new year. It might be me, might be another man. Who knows what the year has in store for us. But somebody, if the rapture don't happen and the church is still here, if God's still moving, and I assume he will be, some of you will still be here, and somebody will be saying, Welcome to 2021. I hope I'm still praying that prayer, Brown, and going into 2022, asking God, amen, to bless me indeed, asking him to increase my coast, asking him to keep his hand upon me, asking him to keep me from evil that it can't grieve me. 
Friend, that prayer has changed my life. We talk about favor. Kevin talked about favor. And I've preached out of Proverbs how you obtain favor. That prayer will help you. I don't apologize for having favor. Amen. Anybody found favor this year? I want you to listen to this scripture. And I'll never forget where I just read in Luke chapter number 4. I'm going to go back to verse before. And this is Jesus preaching in the temple. And the, Randall, the whole word of God opened up before their eyes. And I'll never forget... The Sunday that the church voted on me, amen, to, to take the church here. No, uh, unanimous, 100%. Or if it wasn't Jim or whoever counted them, Brian, they hit the ones that said no. But anyway, they told me it was 100%. I still got all those votes in my desk. Check yes or no, and they didn't have a major. <laughs> like your fifth grade notes that you used to send. But I remember that service, David, and I was sitting right here, and Sid got up, and he brought his Bible over here to me, and he laid it in my lap, and he pointed at that verse right there that I just read you. But I want you to listen to what the verse before says, and this is Jesus, amen, and this is Jesus, what he's going to do, but this is you too. This can be part of your vision, and I want you to listen. Verse 18 said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Can you say Amen. Because he has anointed me to listen to this. Fill in the blank for yourself this morning. Preacher, I can't think of nothing. I, I don't know what he's anointed me to do. If you're saved, you're here this morning, he's anointed you to do something. If you've got a vision in your heart, and the Bible said without a vision... You'll perish, Seth, without a vision and without knowing, able to fill in that blank with something. Uh, whether it's to feed the hungry or, or help the sick or whatever it is, if you can't fill in that blank this morning, honey, you're in trouble. Now listen to me. This is what he's anointed me to do, to preach the gospel to the poor. Now that don't mean for me to go out, Brown, and find somebody that ain't got no money. And say, all right, I'm here to preach the gospel to you. It'd be good if I would, but here's what that's saying. My vision is to preach the gospel to the poor in spirit. Because the world has a lot of poverty in it. It has a lot of people, uh, Brown, that don't have no money. But 10,000 times 10,000 is the ones that are poor in spirit. They may have a bank full of money. They may have plenty uh, going on in their life, but their spirit is poor and their spirit is broke and their spirit is dying and they're hurting inside. Bro, the world is full of people that's poor in spirit. And that's what I want to see me do and Cornerstone do when that one that comes through the back door, the one that comes through the side door, when they come in and they come in broke and poor in spirit, we can have something from this pulpit, something from the choir law, something from the musicians, something from the Sunday school rooms that can help them. I walked by the Sunday school rooms this morning. I started this one and went in there, and instead of coming out here and disrupting the class, what I've done, I went around and I stuck my ear to Brown's door, and I listened a minute, and I heard this word. I heard him say, yeah, because of the cross. Amen. Talking about the cross, them kids are going to be all right, and then I stuck my ear to Kelly's door and, and Angie's door and I listened to them and they were talking about helping your neighbor and being accountable and I'm like, yes! Them kids are going to be alright! I can get a vision out of that! That's what I want to see here. When that one that's poor in spirit and broke down in spirit and you can't tell by looking at this. This right here will lie to you because see, I can smile. I'm not a good smiler. I'm a better lifer than a smiler. Does that make sense? Tell me to smile in a picture, and I can't hardly do it, Randall. Tell me to smile and show my teeth, I'll leave. <laughs> I like to laugh, but I can laugh and smile, and then here still be poor as can be. Everybody in here can put on a front. You can act one way but really be another. You can smile and put on a happy face, but inside you know it ain't right, and you're broken hearted and you're poor in spirit. Amen. But I want right here, thank God. This will help you. Listen to this now. We'll be done in just a minute. I'm just telling you my vision. He sent me to heal the broken hearted. 
That's almost the same thing. I can't heal them, but if I take the gospel to them and I tell them about Jesus, he can heal them. Amen? How many of you know somebody that's broken hearted? A lot of you in here this morning are broken hearted. A lot of you have broken hearts and even over the last year, you look back and unforgiveness is laid in your path and, and pain and, and broken things. The world will break your heart. The world will let you down. The world will build up your hopes and tell you lies. And then it will break your heart and it will leave you right there where it found you. Am I all right this morning? Hey, it's an old rainy, nasty day outside. We might as well be here for a little while. To preach deliverance to the captives. I heard Doug talking this morning through the intercom. I went back in the nursery and I even listened to some of the adult class. He was talking about going to the prison ministry. Them captives, they're prisoners, ain't they? At night, they, Denise, they might get out and they're still confined, confined to that place and they might get out and move around to the day and at night, they put them in a cell, lock the door. They're captive. But you know what? Through these doors in Cornerstone Church, on Sunday mornings, Dan, there's always captives walk in. Amen. There's people that come into this church and they're a slave to depression. They're a prisoner to anxiety. They're a prisoner to a bad relationship. They're a prisoner uh, to something in their life. They're a prisoner. They're captive. Amen. They're called. And it's our job as a church to be a light that shines bright enough to set them free from that. <laughs> How many of you have ever been there? How many of you have ever been set free? Man, I got some good candidates for workers, looking for workers. Can I tell you this? I'm not big on numbers. There may be less than this here New Year's week next year. Do you know that? But if you got half of this size crowd here next year and everybody's bought into serving, we're better with that crowd than we are with 500 and, a, and building on it. That's just here to be here. Preach. Listen. Deliverance to the captives, recovering, and recovering sight to the blind. Jesus opened up a lot of blind people's eyes, Paige, but my vision is to open up this, what it really means. See, I stand up here on Wednesdays and Sundays, and there's Sunday school teachers, and Alan, they teach and preach, we preach this to the letter the best that we can. And brown people are blind to it. They come in and they, they listen, but they don't hear you know what I mean? Has anybody ever listen but you don't hear? You go to your Sunday school class and you don't remember a word that was said. You come to the preaching and you don't know that a word that was said. You sing the songs in your car and you make up your own words because you don't really know what they're saying. You know the tune but you don't know the song. <coughs> and we're blind. We're going through the motions. We're going through everything but the real thing. If we really... If our eyes were really open to this thing, this big spiritual world that's out here, Seth, we'll act different. We'll talk different. We'll live different. We'll want to be holy. We'll want to be right. The things that are wrong in the world, Doug, they will concern you. They will bother you. You will want to do something. You will want to help the blind. Amen. If we were in a country, we talked the other day, if we were in a country and they said, all right, no more going to church. No more reading your Bible. No more praying. Page every store that still had a Bible would sell out like this. People would go to praying and the churches would be packed. But it's such a luxury that we're blind to what we really have. Are you all right this morning? And to set at liberty them that are bruised. What's liberty mean? Freedom. There's a lot of people in this church that are broken hearted, that are bound down, and that have no freedom spiritually. I've saw people in the church in the last year, and I told you I'm just going to talk to you. And since 2018 to 2019, members regress. That won't, don't want to do what they used to do. That feel like it's a burden. That the church is not the priority, that hands can't raise no more. Or they're at half mass. I've saw a lot of Christian people that served for a good while go backwards into a relationship with God. How do you know, preacher? You can tell by looking. 
You can tell by the testimony. You can tell by the song. You can tell, Doug, you can tell that by the look on people's faces. If you're not going forward, you're either staying the same or regressing. The worst fear, Matt, that you can have as a, a student athlete is to stay, stay the same for four years in a row. To never get better. To never be moving forward. You might not see the results, but you'll know it sometime along the way whether you're going forward or backward. Listen. I've seen a lot of young people coming in this church too that's grew this year more than anything I've ever seen. How many of y'all got saved this year, 2019? In church this morning, on a rainy morning, that had been real easy, Corey, to say, I believe I'll just stay home today. It's too nasty anyhow. I don't feel good. There's people sick. We might catch something. Thank God you push through. That's... That's what the church needs. And I want to tell you my vision for the church and we're going home. Let me read to you a scripture over here. How many of you are all right? First John chapter number 3 verse 14. Turn down your Bibles. Chapter number 3, verse 14. When you found it, say amen. amen. My vision for the church is this right here. Whosoever hateth his brother is a murderer. And ye know that no murderer hath eternal life. That's verse 15. Let me read verse 14. We know that we have passed from death Unto life. How many of you are saved? Amen. Because. No doubt somebody in here is wondering if you're saved or if you're lost. Right now. Because we love the brethren. He that loveth not his brother abideth in death. My vision for Cornerstone is this right here. Me and Brown talked this week. The only thing that's going to change Cornerstone and going to change the world is one word. It's love. If you hate people, if, if I'll tell you how you know if you're backsliding. How many of you ever backslid? Let me tell you how you know if you're starting to backslide now. If you think bad thoughts about people first thing in the morning. If you hate people. If you can think about somebody long enough that it builds up a hate inside of you. That, that you, you hate them and you want bad for them or you want to lie on them or you want to do something to hurt them. You're probably backslid or lost. If you're that person right now that's, that's more negative than positive and, and everything everybody does gets on your nerves and, and you just want to be hateful about everything, something's the matter. Because you can't love people and make a difference being that person. That's tough, ain't it? But Doug, you know what happens to me when I get negative? I start blaming other people. I start thinking about other people. I start thinking about what they've done. Miss Betty, all of a sudden, everybody's getting on my nerves, and I can get eat up with stuff that don't matter. Am I the only one? Here's what I want the church to be. I want Cornerstone Church to be a place of one thing and one thing only. That's hope. Me and Brown talked this week, and, and that word kept coming up in conversation. And, and Matt, I want people that have no hope, that's got broken hearted, and, and people that need to be set at liberty, doesn't they can say, come to the church. Some of you that had testimonies, uh, Claudine and her brother, and, and one of, ones of you that's got family that's lost. I want this to be a place of hope. And on those days that you want to throw in the towel and it hurts so bad, Miss Betty, that, that you're overwhelmed with it like this morning, you can come here and find hope, refuge, a place of peace, a place of deliverance. It's right here. You can find everything you need right here. That's my vision. In 2020, I want to see people come out of these aisles and come right here and change forever. Not temporary. I looked at a picture it's crazy. Church is the only thing, Matt, that turns over faster than travel ball. <laughs> Matt laughs because he knows what I'm talking about. I looked at a picture in the back from 2008. 17 people in one picture. 13 of them are gone. 
Some died, some moved away, some quit. That's a lot. You know what happened? That net that I preached about, that snare, that trap that I preached about last Sunday, how many of you remember that? That snare, they fell into it somewhere along the way, and it got them. That's a shame. That's a lot of people. Seth, I want to be the one that, that helps them around that snare. Evidently, we didn't vote. Evidently, I didn't vote. And some people, you can't help. Some of you looking pale now. Some, Kevin, some people ain't going to be helped. You know why? Because they don't want it. We can only help the ones that want it. Amen? My vision for you is you got so much hope on you when you go outside of these doors that people see your hope and they're drawn to it so much. You know what brings people to Cornerstone? The people of Cornerstone. Because, Brian, people see something in you that they want or they don't have or they need and they want that hope. Amen. Are people going to talk about us? Are people going to lie about us? Are people going to say stuff about us? Absolutely. But look, I've said it here a hundred times, and I'm, I had something I was going to say today, but I'm not going to say it. Listen, as long as they're lying, and we don't give them nothing to tell the truth about to hurt our name, let them lie. Because just like my mama says, as long as they're talking about me, Doug, they're leaving you alone. So I'll take it. It'll be all right. Sage, as long as you're lying, let them talk. But let's not do nothing. Let's be that church that's got so much hope that we don't give no truth out there to hurt our name or God's name. If we do that, Matt, we'll have a good year. Another good year. Do you know how many churches, would, pastors would like to say how many of you got saved this year, but they know not a soul could raise their hand? Do you know what it does for me? To be able to say that and see somebody raise their hand. You know what that's called? That's called an acceptable year of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Alan, that's what we need. That's all we need. One more year. Let's work on one more year. No use to worry about three years from now, Brown. Just worry about next Sunday because it'll be 2020. <coughs> How many of you got 2020 vision? We'll need it. Lord, we love you. Thank you this morning for your, your good mercy and your grace and God's wisdom. Need your wisdom so bad. Thank you for it. Lord, I pray over our church. I pray for Cornerstone.